We are now joined by UFC strawweight Randa Marcos. Randa, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Uh, first question will go to Gabriel Gonzalez with Cage Side Press. Hi, Randa. This is your second fight pick after the roller coaster of the last one in May. What is the feeling like now, where I'm assuming everything is a little more organized and less of a surprise? Um, I'm a little more confident now. Um, when I was uh, my last fight. Um, the coronavirus stuff had just started and everything was kind of like uh, up in the air and nobody knew what was going on and it's like we might fight, we might not fight and and uh, everything was, yeah, just just craziness. And so now since we've had so many fights since then, I feel like I feel more confident and more like stress free um, going into this fight. I feel like everything's a little more under control. After watching it back, what did you take from the fight with Amanda Hibas when you went back to work in the gym? Um, that fight, uh, I didn't feel myself, you know, and, and it sucked. I'm really upset with myself for, for the, my performance in that fight. She's a tough, tough opponent. She's a very tough opponent. Um, uh, it just, I guess like she had a faster pace. She was uh, more in my face, you know? So, uh, I took that into consideration going to this next fight. Um, I still believe in my, my skills and everything. I just need to be pushing forward more and, um, yeah, just, I don't know, push forward more. When you have an opponent like Mackenzie Dern, she's so known for her Brazilian jiu-jitsu, obviously. Is there temptation to want to grapple with her just to prove a point for yourself? Um, absolutely not. Um, I like to be uh, smart and like, you know, when I find somebody who's got a strength somewhere, I like to take that away from them and, uh, you know, take it to my game and what I'm strong at. So uh, I'm, I'm not going to, if it goes to the ground, you know, I'm no stranger to the ground. I've been doing this for a very, very long time. Um, so. I wouldn't be shocked and like not want to take it there. If it goes there, I'm, I'm ready for it, but I'm not going to purposely try to go to the ground. Do you feel like she's evolved as a fighter since she's been in the UFC? Um, definitely she's evolved as a fighter. I mean, you, you can't not evolve when you're uh, put in with the best women in the world and have to fight and figure it out. So uh, she's definitely evolved. I think, um, uh, you know, I'm going to get a better version of, of Mackenzie Dern for this fight and I'm prepared for it. My final question, how does this fight play out in your mind when you've thought about it? Um, you know, you can't, you can't uh, be 100% with what you might see or whatever, but I, I think it might go three rounds, um, might go to a decision, but you know, you never know what can happen. It's the UFC, so we'll see. Thank you, good luck. Thank you. We'll go next to Damon Martin with MMA Fighting. Your line is open. Miranda, uh, let me ask first off with Mackenzie Dern. Have you been impressed by what you've seen out of her so far in her UFC career? She's obviously, I think, three and one. You know, she's had some good wins. She had the tough fight with Amanda, a opponent obviously you're familiar with. What have you thought of her her fight so far? Um, Technique-wise, like, I, I don't think she's anything special. Um, on the ground, you know, obviously um, she's been doing that a lot longer than most of us. And so I definitely respect her on the ground. But um, I, I think the, the thing I'm most impressed with is her ability to take a punch and keep coming at you. And that's one thing I'm going to be looking looking at is or, or what, one thing that we've been working on is like the fact that she can get hit and keep coming forward and keep coming forward. So uh, that's one thing I'm impressed with. Well, you know, of course, talking about McKenzie, immediately we go to the jiu-jitsu. I know she's worked a lot on her striking. She started working with Jason Perillo for this camp. Uh, she showed it in the Hebus fight. You know, she does have hands. I mean, obviously, she lost that fight, but, you know, she didn't get knocked out. She had a, a strong fight there. But when you face an opponent with such a strong skill set in one area, you know, on paper, you kind of got to imagine at some point she's going to try to take it down. She's going to try to go in that jiu-jitsu realm. Does that make it easier or harder when you face an opponent who is, you know, so strong in that one area where you kind of imagine that's where they want to fight. Um, I find it easier to fight people who have um, a strength in one particular place because um, your your camp becomes simpler and not so complex. Like fighting somebody like Amanda Hebes, it's like, okay, we got to be ready for everywhere. And for somebody like, you know, Carla Sparza, we know she's going to take you to the ground. So we got to just focus on don't let her take you to the ground. And I think this is the same thing kind of with that fight going into the fight with Mackenzie Dern is she's going to want to take it to the ground. I'm sure she thinks she's better there uh, than most of us. So, uh, and she's 
done it in, in most of her fights where she's wanted to take the fight to the ground and coming off a, a submission in her last fight, we were expecting her to want to take it to the ground, but I'm not undermining her, her hands or her skills everywhere else. But I find it a lot easier when someone comes in with one strength um, somewhere in particular. When you came off the Ultimate Fighter, you were kind of you kind of grew up in the UFC in a way. You know, you've had almost all of your fights in the UFC. And you have a lot of experience at this point against a lot of top-notch competition. Uh, Mackenzie's still very young in her career. She's still learning, and and I don't know from the Hevis fight to the Cyphers fight, did we learn that much more about her? How much does experience play a part? That you have had to face adversity. That you have had to fight out of tough positions and and you know fight out of uh, things when things don't go right whereas we haven't seen that much from her just because she is so young in her career i think that's a that's a huge benefit that i have coming into this fight i do have a lot of experience i fought most of the girls in top 10 you know so um i fought some of the best so uh and most of the best so you know i have that coming into this fight and um the the ups and downs and all of the um you know, all of the things I've learned through every single fight, I always learn something. I always take something from every single fight. So yeah, that's definitely a huge benefit going into this fight and not having so many fights can, can either be a good thing or a bad thing because, um, you know, when you start overthinking, having too many fights, overthinking kind of plays against you. And when you're new and fresh, you know, it could help you in a way. So I, you can't base a, somebody's skill off of that. A lot of things are mental and that's what I learned along the way. And last question, of course, Randy, the focus is your fight. I don't want to take away from that, but a big main event on this card, Colby Covington against Tyron Woodley. I got to ask your opinion or pick, prediction. How do you see that one playing out? Uh, I think it's a great, great fight, and uh, I'm going to have to go with Colby Covington this fight. Uh, I think it's gonna, it's not going to go the distance, but, um, yeah, sorry uh, to Tyron Woodley, but I, I'm thinking that Colby Covington is going to win this fight. Thank you, Randa. No problem. We'll go next to Jeffrey Harris with 411 Mania MMA. Good afternoon, Miranda. Thanks for joining us today. No problem. Uh, we are coming up on the sixth century of your UFC debut. So that's over half. So when you first came into the UFC, women's MMA was still fairly new to the promotion. So can you speak at all about, you know, what this journey has been like for you, becoming a UFC fighter, a veteran, and now you're fighting on ESPN and what that experience is like from your perspective? Um, I think my experience of with being with the UFC and being here for so long and being able to have the opportunity to fight like most of the girls, you know, most of the top girls, it's just, it's been an honor and it's been amazing but I feel like I have so much more to prove, you know, and I have so much more to do and um, so much more, more to accomplish. And um, it's been great and we've evolved so much. I think we have one of the toughest divisions, if not the toughest divisions in the UFC right now um, with the straw weights. And um, it's just, it's come a long way. And we've- uh, Also, Randa. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, my connection bugged out there for a second. Uh, also, Randa, do you have any thoughts on, like, you know, matter and the judging? Uh, because most of your losses in the UFC are by decision. Um, is that something you're looking to avoid, Kenzie Durant? Because, uh, you know, you don't want a bad um, judge's decision here. No, obviously, I've, I've been in that situation many times, and it sucks, you know, especially when you feel that you've won. And if your opponent says they think you they lost, you know what I mean? It just, it sucks. But, you know, you got to always remember, like, um, you, you know, you got to give it everything you have. And whatever happens at the end, you know, it's not in your hands. And that's one thing I've learned along the way. But, um, yeah, you definitely, I never go in there wanting a decision. I never go in there wanting a decision. But it happens. You know, these girls are tough. And we've both worked very, very hard to be there. And, you know, we're not going to just, you know, if it happens, it happens. Um, but uh, I'm never looking for a decision. Uh, last year, you fought in uh, defeated Angela Hill, who uh, lined uh, UFC card uh, Michelle Watterson. Did you see that fight? And uh, what did you think of uh, the judge's decision for that fight? Did you think Angela Hill did enough to win, or did you agree with the decision? Um, that was another fight that I had where, you know, a person comes in there with one kind of strength, and you take away that strength from them. 
and you can beat them. And that's that was one thing that I was focused on. And and watching her fight go the distance, you know, five full rounds where I took it, you know, in the first round and I and I ended it. Um, you know, it, it really made me think, made me realize, you know, I'm always learning about myself and I kind of like um, don't give myself enough credit. Watching that fight, I realized like, man, I'm freaking tough. <laughs> you know, I ended that fight in the first round and they went the distance. So, uh, but it was an awesome fight. Both girls are tough as nails and um, both, I feel that was a great matchup too. And, and it's all about matchups. That was a great matchup. Um, they both kept it standing. They both, um, you, you know, I, they both like, their strengths are obviously stand up and it is a great fight. One thing, MMA, I think this is a great sport for ups and for underdogs. Would you say you're the underdog going in against Mackenzie Dern? And do you think that uh, gives it gives a good platform for you um, for this fight? Um, yeah, uh, going in there as an underdog is not something new to me. I'm always, I'm almost always the underdog. But um, it just gives me no pressure, and uh, I'm not looking at this fight like that. I'm just looking at this fight like I lost my last one. I'm really pissed off at myself, and this is the opportunity for me to prove to myself that you know that that fight doesn't dis define me. And I'm just gonna go in there and have fun and do what I've been training really hard for, and whatever happens, happens. Uh, time, uh, Randa, and uh, best of luck for this matchup. Thank you. We'll go next to Mike Bond with USA Today. Your line is open. In this situation, do you just kind of feel comfortable here and knowing that every time you've been in the spot, you've been able to get back on track? Um, yeah, that's uh, that's one thing. Like, I, I don't really play it that way in my head. You know, it's just uh, it just happens that way, I guess. Um, where it's like when I have a loss, I kind of like brings me back to stop overthinking, start focusing on what you're good at, and go in there and be the best at what you're good at. And um, that's that's one thing I'm taking away from my last fight. Is like, yeah, that sucks stop thinking and I think overthinking is one of my biggest downfalls and whenever I'm, I have a loss it kind of like brings me back to normal and like no you know you got this you can do it what's the mindset on the flip side of that when you get a win because we haven't seen you put two together in the UFC yet either I think uh coming off a win I think like I want to keep it that way you know like I just put so much pressure on myself I start you know, overthinking and trying to do better than I did before and just trying to work hard, work hard, but overthinking and just, I don't know, I don't know how to like fix that. I'm trying my best. I'll, I'll, uh, I think having more faith in, in what I'm good at and just, yeah, like just, just believing in my skills and not having to overdo it, just have fun. It's something I've lost, I feel, along the way and I just need to find it again. Awesome, Miranda. Thank you. Best of luck. Thank you. All right, thank you very much, Randa. You're all set to go.